Story time about how I found my husband's secret phone. Disclaimer is not my story time. It's sent me on Instagram. I found five dating apps and two secret girlfriends on his phone. And I can't even begin to tell you what I found on Instagram. Up until this point, my husband and I had the utmost respect and trust for each other. I never once thought he was capable of doing this. Literally every woman says that when they find out their man is cheating. Around six months ago, my husband started a new job. He's in tech and makes a lot of money. So I've been able to stay at home with our kids. We now have two kids and they're both two and five. Our life is amazing. Our parents live near us. We always make time for each other and go out on dates. We even take solo trips on the weekends. Last year, we went to Bali for two weeks. My point is, we always make time for each other. When he started his new job, he started earning more money. But this also meant that he took on a lot more work. He was always so stressed out. My husband and I met in college and we studied the exact same thing. We both worked for the same company. Eventually, I retired to take care of our kids. So when he got his new job, I offered to help him out with his work. He was actually really grateful for this and we were both doing a really good job. He was working from home three days out of the week. So it was a great situation. We were spending time together, working together, and the kids were spending more time with their dad. His new job gave him a new cell phone and this is the cell phone that I would usually use to help him out with his work and his laptop. Part 2 is up. Story time about how I found my husband's secret cell phone, his two girlfriends and his five dating apps. Disclaimer is not my story time instead of me on Instagram. I started using his work cell phone to help him out with his job and he kept his own cell phone. This is when I started noticing that he would make a big deal about losing his phone. Anytime he would misplace it, he would go absolutely berserk. Now I thought it was just because he was stressed about work till I realized it wasn't stress. He forgot to silence his phone one night and the notifications were going off. I woke him up and asked him to turn it off. My mind did not go to him cheating. I thought it was work related stuff. But then I realized it was his personal phone that was going off, not his work phone. The next day he apologized for having his work notifications on and I said, but it wasn't your work phone, it was your personal phone. And he said, no it wasn't. And I said, yes it was. And that's when he accused me of being paranoid and crazy. And that's when I knew he was cheating. I had to keep it cool though. I was feeding the kids in the kitchen when this all happened. On this day he was going to go to work. I knew that he was going to take his personal and his work phone with him to the office. So what I did was change the phone covers on each phone and flip them upside down. He grabbed the work phone thinking it was his personal phone. He put it in his pocket and went to the bathroom. And he left his work phone, which was his personal phone, on the countertop. I told him that maybe I should keep it just in case I needed to answer emails and he said yes. He left and I had his phone all to myself. As soon as I opened his personal phone, I went straight to the messages and I found his two girlfriends, Laura and Missy. Part three is Story time about how I found my husband's secret phone is two girlfriends and his five dating apps. Disclaimer is not my story time instead of me on Instagram. I started reading through the text messages between his two girlfriends. I scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. He had been together with the first girl for two months and the second girl just for three weeks. And in the messages, he was totally bad mouthing me. He was telling them that I was crazy and abusive. And that's how he justified his cheating to them. I also read in some of the messages that he was complaining about our kids. How spoiled and ungrateful my kids were. And that's why he wanted to escape the house to be with them. Let me tell you, our kids are so considerate and so loving towards us. They're very affectionate children and they never get upset at their dad whenever he has to go to work. So for him to be talking badly about our children just made everything 10 times worse. After reading the messages for about two or three minutes, I went to the bathroom and vomited. I was physically ill. His messages were so perverted too. I know that when you start a new relationship, you're always trying to impress people, but he just took it too far. After I vomited, I went back to his phone and kept reading the messages. This is when I found out that he was paying both of these girls rents. So the whole time I'm helping him with his job to earn money for our family, Half of that was going to these women. I got sick again. After I calmed down for a few minutes, I went back to his phone. Then I found his dating apps. His dating profile was so disgusting too. He was all about fitness and mental health. He also claimed that he was single in his dating profiles. So on top of him cheating on me, he was cheating on his two girlfriends. This time I didn't bother reading all the messages he had in the dating apps. But I did notice that he was going on dates with multiple girls several times a week. Later on I found out that the whole work situation was a lie. He was working from home the entire time, but going on dates. I took screenshots of everything and went straight to my lawyer. I filed for divorce that very same day. When my husband came home, I confronted him and he denied everything. Even with all the proof, he's still denying it. He's not speaking to our children and you better believe I'm getting half of all his money. Bye. Am I wrong for not telling my husband I went into labor? I, 32 female, have three kids. K, 12 female, L, 4 female, and I just gave birth to my beautiful baby girl, Valerie. My husband and I have been married for five years and I love him, but he's a little bit of a mama's boy. My mother-in-law hates me. I grew up in a richer neighborhood and my parents left me with quite a lot of inheritance when they passed, about 13 million in assets. Mother-in-law, however, was a single mother with two sons and had a lot of trouble just paying for basic needs. She worked her way up and I think she's very strong. She doesn't like me and thinks I'm pretentious because apparently I had everything handed to me. Well, when I got pregnant with Elle, we decided to name him Luke, after my husband's father who died when my husband was only three. Mother-in-law was through the roof when we told her, but ever since I fell pregnant again with Valerie, she has been adamant that we would name her Francine after her late grandmother. My husband wants to as well, but I don't. Instead, I wanted to name her Valerie, and not just because I like the name, but also because when I was 17, the song Valerie by Amy Winehouse came out and me and my family would sing it all the time. 
At family gatherings, it was always first on the speaker, car rides, and just in general. It was basically our song. Well, my older sister and my parents passed away in a house fire three years ago, and I missed them terribly. We were all a very close family, so it hit me and my younger sister very hard. When I suggested this to my husband and mother-in-law, they actually got mad at me because they wanted it to be Francine. I suggested we name her Valerie with the middle name Francine or Francine with the middle name Valerie, but they weren't happy with either. During my last month of pregnancy, my husband has become more angry with me. I finally snapped and said that I wasn't going to name my child an ugly name that I don't like for the sake of a woman that doesn't even like me. He said that I was being unbelievable and that I had insulted a strong, independent mother. I immediately apologized, but he left to his mother's house. Two days later, I couldn't reach him at all, and on the third day I went into labor, Kate kept saying she would text my husband, and I told her not to bother. After hours of labor and awful pain, I gave birth to my baby girl and named her Valerie with Diana as the middle name. Diana was my mother's name. About two hours after I gave birth, my younger sister was able to reach my mother-in-law to get the message to my husband. When they came in, my husband was raging and yelling at me, calling me a pretentious, backstabbing bitch, and mother-in-law was more upset about the name. I think this might be the end of my marriage, but we can still change her name if I really wanted to. So, am I the asshole? Should I just change the name? I'm 30 and don't have the best relationship with my husband's mom. Since day one, she tried to make remarks and compare me to her. She then tried to get on my good side and started overly praising everything I do and sometimes even copying me. Like one time when she literally dyed her hair purple just like mine and when everyone pointed out how ridiculous she looked, she actually blamed me and accused me of trying to make a joke out of her. So anyway, my husband and I took two weeks off work to go visit some places out of the country. Tourism in other words. The thing is, I was the one who saved up for and arranged a trip. My husband was responsible for booking the tickets. My husband's mom wanted to come along and threw temper tantrums when I said no. She called texted send people to talk to me into letting her come even threatened to call the police and make some complaint up to get us to stay if she can't come my husband said that we should take her but i told him that he was wrong to tell her about the trip in the first place he gave me an ultimatum he said he wouldn't go if she can't come i told him that i'd gladly call his bluff which made him take back his words and say fine i'll tell her to stop it because we won't take her things got quieter suspiciously quieter the day of the trip came and we got to the airport at 2 p.m my husband was walking ahead of me and was looking left and right like he was looking for someone. I asked him, but he didn't respond. He led me to the waiting area and the first thing I saw was his mom standing there with her luggage. I froze in my spot. I felt a cold wave washing over me and I was fuming inside. She and my husband were hugging and that's when I quietly turned and started walking towards the exit. My husband followed me while shouting at me to stop. He tried to stop me, but I told him off in the harshest way possible. He tried to say that I was overreacting and that his mom was there anyway and that I should let it go and not mess his trip up for us. I told him that he and his mom could still go and I was going home. I went home and stopped into my dog's fur for several minutes. Turns out that he booked her ticket without me knowing. An hour later, he came home yelling and raging about how pathetic and spiteful I was to walk out and go home and ruin a trip last minute. I told him he caused this to happen. He said that I was being so hard on his mom, it's ridiculous. I refused to fight anymore, but he kept berating me and then called my family to tell them that the trip was canceled and it was because of me. My family said that I shouldn't have ruined it for myself and should have sucked it up and done my best to enjoy. Did I really overreact? Am I the asshole for walking out of the airport when I saw my husband's mom standing there with her luggage? Part 2. Am I the asshole for walking out of the airport when I saw my husband's mom standing there with her luggage? So, for more details about my situation, I have to admit that my husband's mom favors him over all of his siblings. This affected his relationship with them and me as well. He's never seen an issue with how differently his mom treats him. It bothered me and made me feel uncomfortable. The whole dynamic made me feel uncomfortable. Going low contact has never been an option, like he has to see her or call her every day. Most of his siblings don't talk to him and I 100% believe it's because of his mom's favoritism like I said. He does bear some blame for not seeing how wrong it is until this day. In many instances, I even find myself making excuses for his behavior. I did so subconsciously and I don't know why, but I guess it's because of how much I love him and because I really, really want to be able to work things out without letting them affect our marriage. Regarding what happened with the trip, he tried to have a talk with me and most of what he said came from a place of blame. Blame towards me. I just couldn't continue with this argument. I told him that I needed space and I would be going to stay with my sister for a while. He didn't take it well. He literally got up from the couch and opened the door and telling me to go right then. In that moment, and seeing how he was still not anywhere near understanding what he had just did, made things perfectly clear to me. I just had pictured years and years of life being lived like that, and I was like, no, I can't do it. Can't take any more of it, especially when he keeps focusing on being right every time. His mom can do no wrong. I'm always the aggressive, crazy, jealous, pathetic overreactor. Everyone's opinions, advice, and concerns were like a spark, like the wake-up call that I really needed. Though I wish he didn't get this far, but what's done is done. Right now, I'm staying with my sister. I brought my dog with me as well. He sent me his last message telling me that I'm the one choosing to end what we had together, but I believe it's the other way around. Especially with how he keeps making his mom the victim in this situation. It's become clear that now we keep going in circles with no end in reach and I'm just so exhausted and overwhelmed. I'm not mad at him and I don't expect him to change, but at least I'm given options to decide what's best for me and my future even if it's separation and divorce. Am I the asshole for not paying for the food and leaving my date stranded? My sister set me up with her friend a few weeks ago and we would take turns paying. Yesterday, I picked her up from her house and took her to the restaurant for dinner. After we finished eating, she asked the waitress to refill her glass of water. The place was packed and the waitress passed by our table multiple times. Instead of a friendly reminder, she told her if she's mentally declining, she should be in a retirement home instead of leaving people thirsty. 
The poor woman looked like she was about to cry and started apologizing to my date and went to get the water. I was shocked, embarrassed, and angry. I asked why she would even think to say that. Am I the asshole for not paying for the food and leaving my date stranded? I excused myself and went to apologize to the waitress. I paid for the food I ordered, tipped her a big time, and left. This morning, my sister called me angrily saying how much of an asshole I am for what I did to her friend. Apparently, after I left, the manager threatened to call the cops if she didn't pay. She had to call her dad for money and the ride back home. I explained to my sister what she did, but she wasn't interested in taking my side. She said since I picked her up from the place and since it was my turn paying for the date, I should have just did so.